Once upon a time, way back in the late 70s, in the UK, the urban street life was divided by two nightlifes. You had the reggae scene and you had the soul scene. Uh, let me start off with the reggae scene. The reggae scene, um, it carried a more serious vibe. That was also divided in two sections. You had the um, roots where uh, the inspiration was inspiring black people to have more um, self, self esteem, learning about their history and their self worth. And the other side was the British reggae known as Lovers Rock. But like I said, it still had more of a, a serious vibe to it. So we move over to the other side of the urban stroke street scene in the UK at the time, the soul scene. Soul scene was more upbeat, more had a more of a happy vibe. The vibe was get up and boogie and shake your thing. And even when the breakdance uh, phenomena came around in the late eighties, it was still about get up and boogie and shake your thing. We arrived to the mid eighties, um, the nightlife took a bit of a different sort of twist then. Um, the the hip-hop, there was more rivalry between um, MCs, but it was still more, it was still, it still had a fun twist to it. They're, they're a thing called dissing each other or, or um, slagging each other off, as we say in the UK. Um, cool Modi versus LL Cool J and stuff like that. Uh, on the reggae side, you had the birth of the dance hall or reggae. And um, again, that had still, still, on the reggae side, still had more of a serious vibe. Um, on the soul side, the, the, the funky side, even included hip hop, it was still more, it, the vibe was still more get up and boogie and shake your thing. Anyway, now we get to the late 80s. And I'm going to also include the early 90s. Three monumental things happened. Three. First, in the late 80s, the arrival of the West Coast rap. NWA, niggas with attitude. Um, this gave birth to what I call the angry generation. The, yo motherfucker, I'm the wrong nigger to fuck with. Um... Then followed by the, the late night, uh, early 90s, sorry, early 90s, with a series of films starting with New Jack Swing, Colours, Menace to Society. And then the third thing that was very important, the fall of the Berlin Wall. The reason why I mentioned the fall of the Berlin Wall, before the Berlin Wall fell uh, in Germany, I didn't really remember much um, footage or gossip about guns in the UK. Yes, you had the occasional uh, bank robbery by a bloke with a stocking over his head and a sword of shotgun. But in terms of gang related, that was more or less alien. That was something to the other lot, the Americans. But since the fall of the Berlin Wall, and NWA and the films, things slowly, very slowly came to what we have now. So the upbeat, happy, funky brother from the way back in the days of um, the disco, um, breakdance, underground funk, my generation, we're more or less a shadow of that past. It we're. Uh, the funky bro has been replaced with the more angry bro. The, yo, motherfucker, I'm the wrong nigga to fuck with. Of course, that doesn't apply to everyone. Of course not. Of course not. That'd be, that'd be a silly, generaliz silly, silly generalization. But the admiration for anger, it appears. That's how it appears. I'm, I'm not a youngster, as you can see, so I don't know. But I'm just only saying how it appears. That's for you to put this old man right. 
Okay, so how it appears, it appears that there is a taste and a vibe for the anger and the blood and yeah, blood of the cribs. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, all this signs and everything. There we are. So, as a result, it appears that we've got guns in the streets and knives skating around, uh, especially here in London. That's my little story. But I'm not saying my story is watertight. I'm not saying my story is totally correct. But there is truth in my little story. Thank you very much.